Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2020 film Freaky, and yes, it is the Blumhouse film that has Vince Vaughn in it. Now, I remember seeing a, a little snippet of a trailer when this was coming out, and I was like, hmm, kind of intrigued by this. Probably will get to it at some point, so I finally did. It's available on HBO Max when I'm putting this review out. Well, actually, when I'm recording this review, I don't know when I'm putting it out, but maybe it's still on HBO Max when this comes out. Maybe it's not, but take a look. Uh, this is one of those no-spoiler reviews since it is a very recent film, uh, but I do try very much to walk that line of giving enough information so that people who have seen the film get a good review, but also not too much information that it actually spoils any of the events of the film for people who have not yet seen it. So you can make a decision, do you want to see it or not? I will say up front, I thought this was a pretty good movie. I thought it was a fun movie, and uh, yeah, I had a good time. This is directed by Christopher Landon, who did other such films such as Burning Palms, Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones. I quit on Paranormal Activity after the first three. I probably should have quit after the first one. Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, Happy Death Day, which I very surprisingly liked. I saw that in the theater, and I believe that was a PG-13. And also Happy Death Day to You, which was a follow-up, which I have not seen, and I have been meaning to. Uh, the script for this was written by Landon as well as Michael Kennedy, who just basically wrote some scripts for a TV show called Border Town. It's animated. I don't know. That, that, that's all I know. So, uh, Based on the 1972 novel by Mary Rogers, entitled Freaky Friday. Yes, you guessed it. So when I, I remember when this film was about to come out, I was like, is it like freaky as in like a Freaky Friday type takeoff, but horror? Yes, that's basically what it is. It is taking that concept of Freaky Friday, which has been made and remade and remade ad nauseum over the, over history, but it's never really gotten the killer treatment. So much like Landon did Happy Death Day, which is basically a horror Groundhog Day, which that whole thing has been used many times, uh, here we are with a Freaky Friday version. And it was supposed to originally be called Freaky Friday the 13th, which I'm glad they got away from that because it's too on the nose. Uh, but then they used another title for a little bit was Killer Body, which I think is a much better title than Freaky. Freaky is kind of, I don't know, it's too childish in my opinion. I don't really like that title for this film, but, you know, title's a minor thing. And like I said, overall, I do recommend the film. Um... Apparently, Landon himself has proposed that they do a crossover, because there is potential with the Death Day films as well as with the Freaky film, uh, to do sequels, or even prequels if they want to, but he has proposed a crossover between Death Day and Freaky, and he wants to call it Freaky Death Day. I don't, I think maybe call it something else, like I understand that you kind of like want to have the branding rolled into the title so people you know, recognize those two, fran well, potentially franchises in the future, and put them together, but it's a bad title, it really is, but I'd be interested to see what they would do with it, I'll, I'll tell you that. So I found a list of what Landon cited as his films for inspiration for this film, and if you watch it and you know what his list was, you can see those inspirations showing up in it, especially two films in particular. So Landon said uh, Fright Night, was one, the original Fright Night, the Blob remake, uh, Scream and Scream 2, which I saw the most being drawn from those Scream films, Urban Legend, Cherry Falls, and Jennifer's Body, which I believe Jennifer's Body is on Hulu at the moment, and I definitely want to watch and review that one, because that's a great underrated gem that I've been meaning to get to and do a full review on at some point, so that'll be coming, but um, good list to pull from for the most part. Uh, I haven't seen Cherry Falls. I Actually, I saw a portion of it. It didn't look that great. Haven't seen Urban Legend. I heard it's actually not that great. But Scream is good. Scream 2, uh, not so good. Uh, but obviously Fright Night and the Blob remake. I mean, come on, man. That's great. And Jennifer's Body, great. So quick synopsis. It's Freaky Friday. You know, serial killer on the loose stabs a girl with a special dagger that they happen to fi find at one of the killing locations, and there's some crazy freaky stuff that happens, and they switch bodies. That's all I'm going to say about it, because then from there it just goes. It stands to reason that since Vince Vaughn is in it, there's going to be comedic stuff to it, because that's what Vince Vaughn does, and he does a good job with it, because 
that's what Vince Vaughn does. Uh, so every part you know with Vince Vaughn is going to have the potential for humor. It doesn't always land, but there is some pretty good humor in there, and it is hard to kind of get every comedic thing to land and for everyone to be into it. And also kind of comedic pacing is a lot of the times a problem with uh, horror comedies, which I'm not going to call this a horror comedy, although there is comedy added to it. I have something to talk about it later. After I'm done with everything else, I kind of want to propose a new moniker for films like this, because this, this feels different than a horror comedy, and I'll talk a bit about that. Um, so the opening dialogue has some good meta messaging about slasher films a la Scream and Scream 2, so that's where I started seeing it basically immediately. I was like, oh, this is kind of doing that, taking the genre and, well, subgenre of slasher and then turning it around and showing it, showing it to itself in the mirror in essence. So the dialogue kind of does that like Scream did. Uh, they don't waste much time getting to the fun and the kills happen to be very, very inventive, especially early on, which makes you really look forward to what they're going to be doing next. Are they going to be upping the ante or, or whatnot? I will say that as far as the kills go, you get a lot in the beginning, and then it really steps back a bunch, and you don't get another one for a while, and then after that, it kind of really feels like the kills just aren't frequent enough, especially because of the precedent that was set so early on in the film. It, it kind of feels like, for lack of a better terminology, they kind of blew their load super early with the kills. The kills that come after that are still good for the most part, it's just they're too far spaced out and there's just not enough. Like you just want more. You want him to go harder on it. You wanted more kills and they definitely could have. There's some other stuff that they actually could have uh, cut from the film as well that I think kind of slows the film down a bit. It's about an hour and 40 minute runtime. It also messes with the pacing for this film because there definitely are moments where you notice the pacing gets messed up. It's like that speed bump when you're going over, you know, going through a road that has that speed bump, you really gotta slow down. It just messes up your flow. There's some solid humor injected in the film, like I said. They get a lot of interesting high school dynamics right in this, at least from what I remember from being in high school. Obviously, that's been a long time. So I'd be interested to hear the take from someone who is younger watching this film, which I think this film probably, and obviously I'm saying this as a 40-year-old guy, I think this film probably is geared pretty well towards a younger crowd. It feels that way because it feels light, it feels fun, but it also has that really good horror to it. It's an R rating, so the kills are gruesome, the kills are over the top, they're grisly, they're brutal, so <clears throat> you definitely have that wonderful payoff. So I kind of feel like there's something for everyone. There really is something for everyone in the film as far as, you know, if you're a man, woman, what age you are, all that stuff. Good use of dropping the music at key times to increase tension and uncertainty with what you think is going to go on and when. This is something I always like to call out in film because it's something I really appreciate. You don't always have to have strong music grabbing the audience by the hand and telling them which way to go and how to feel and what's about to be happening. Uh, so it shows some level of respect for the audience and also just in general works to up tension because when that music drops out there's nothing more scary than just not hearing anything i mean silence is scary it really is especially with the <clears throat> with the right setup visually in film the first instance of cgi being used in this film is used to kind of change the scenery in it and if you've seen it, you know what I mean. Like, it's a big moment. Um, it seemed really too over the top, and I really could have done without that. It kind of moved the film into ridiculous realm, in a sense. And thankfully, they didn't do that a lot in the film, but there really were some absurd feeling aspects to the film, that having been probably the key moment, at least the first one that really hits you. And that's part of the reason that I'm saying that later on I want to say uh, give a new moniker for a film like this because it doesn't strike me as just horror comedy because that absurd aspect, the absurd aspect is definitely there. Uh, looks really polished and the camera work is very engaging. Um, I, I mean, I would expect that. I mean, I felt the same way 
watching Happy Death Day from what I remember of it. And the camera work, directing, cinematography, all that type of stuff feels very similar. Story-wise feels similar. Dialogue feels similar. The humor to it feels similar. So if you liked Happy Death Day, you'll definitely like Freaky. And you can tell that Landon did both of them. There's a more serious emotional tone that they try to hit around the 55-minute mark. And it feels very much out of place. Now, it's not just because what they're trying to do, it's how long they took to try and do it. That kind of more serious emotional thing, it would have been fine if they did it kind of a lot quicker, in my opinion. It's not something that really needed to be dwelled on as much as they did. They put like a solid five minutes or so into it. Um, I may be overestimating that, but it felt like about a solid five minutes or so. And it's just too long. And that's one of those things that really messes with the pacing of the film. So I wish they kind of would have just cut that down because they they got the point through within like between 30 and 45 seconds of where they were trying to go with that. So the fact that they then just kept it going, it didn't add anything. And it was, like I said, it was messing up the flow and it was really slowing the film down. And it was just also taking you out of that feeling of like fun and the comedy and all that stuff. It shifted too hard, if you will. It could have been cut down a bit. And there are some um, some issues here and there, but otherwise pretty good. Uh, the pacing issues, not too terrible. but And it didn't take too much away from the film because I still enjoyed it. Now, uh, let me go ahead and give you my final, final thought on this film. This strikes an interesting chord of not just being comedic, but also playful and absurd at the same time. It's very similar feel to Happy Death Day, like I was saying. So I'd like to propose that we call these types of films Freaky and Happy Death Day. And I'd have to think hard to think of some other ones that would fit into this, this I guess, new subgenre I want to throw out there. And call it Slash Stick. You know, it's a slasher, but it's also comedic. But it goes further than comedic because it has that absurdity mixed into it that feels kind of slapsticky. So I want to say, let's call this a Slash Stick film. Let me know your thoughts on that. Also, just in the comments, let me know your thoughts on this film. Go ahead. You can put spoilers down in the comments and let me know on your thoughts on the slash stick moniker. Should we be using that? Is it too dumb? Whatever you think, it's fine. But out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to go ahead and give this a three and a half star rating, which is pretty good. Pretty good for this. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun. And I think there's, like I said, there's a lot in there for a lot of people. It's going to please many people. I'm I'm not sure a lot of people are going to watch it and be like, man, it's my favorite film. But a lot of people are going to watch it and be like, oh, I think that's definitely better than I thought it would be. And that's kind of what I thought. So good work on that one. Like I said, go ahead and put some comments down there. But give me a favor. Do me a favor. Hit subscribe if you can, which you can. It's, you know, costs you no money. It is painless. It takes you like a second and it helps me. That is your way to repay me. That is the way that helps my channel grow. And that's your way to keep me motivated, too. You know, I'm not doing any of this for any sort of monetary anything. I'm uh, just doing it as a hobby and to reach out there to build a nerdy horror community because I like to talk horror. So that's why I also love getting the comments on the videos. But anyway, thanks for taking your time to watch this. And until next time, keep it brutal.